Another of Poundland's wondrous Christmas delights. Yes, I'm sorry to those people who don't like the wondrous Christmas delights, but there's going to be a few of them every Christmas because, well, I quite like Christmas lights. So let's get this out. It is the LED tree topper. Okay, and it's a batch operated LED tree, tree topper. And I'm guessing the construction is going to. Oh, the construction is not what I was expecting. It's got a plastic subframe inside. It looks a bit one directional. Hold on, let's get some batteries into this. And for this test, I'm going to be using, uh, just because they're all I've got left, the zinc chloride type batteries, the ones that leak horribly. That I don't really recommend at all, the zinc batteries. They're, they get very low capacity and then they leak. So what do we have? Each of the five points of the stars has four LEDs. So that's 20 LEDs plus one in the middle, the red one. Uh, so 21 LEDs, presumably wired in parallel. Instead of using yellow LEDs, they've got uh, the warm white ones. Let's uh, turn the light off here. Is this, that's more or less, it's actually, hold on, I'll brighten it up. Oh, far too bright, yeah. See, that's, that's completely unrealistic now. Okay, right, let's uh, dim back to reality. There we go. Um, so the construction of this appears to be as many of these are. It looks like it's pressed together, hopefully not glued, and then it's got this sort of squeaky bit that comes off the bottom. Really common way they make these. It means that it's very hackable. You can change what's inside this. Is this going to come apart without cracking? I also see uh, little inserts here. I wonder what they're for. Little holes for... Oh, here we go. Here we go. I wonder what uh, extra feature they're for. Oh, that always makes loud noises like it's going to break. Incidentally, bright from this side, not so bright from the other. So make sure you point the bright side into your... Uh, into your abode. Unless you're just like making an exhibition of yourself and in which case you can point it out your window. How do you put the tree at the window? Just to like, hey, look at me, I've got a tree. I wonder why that is. I suppose it's just really sharing the celebration. Never really thought about that before. So let's uh, see if I can not burst it on the last one. Whoa. Is that more or less us? It should be more or less us. Oh wait, not here's one that's not quite out here. They're kind of those friction fit pins that just want to go straight back in again. Okay. Oh, it's hot melt glued in place. So we've got a complete star assembly inside that has the LEDs just placed in. The hot melt glue, is that really needed? Are they? I don't think it is. I think they hold themselves in well enough. Hold on, let's get rid of some of the hot melt glue here and uh, test that. Nah. I think uh, it doesn't really grip them in, so yeah, hot melt glue would be needed. The reason I'm saying that is because you could theoretically uh, just replace all these LEDs. Oh, look at that. That's not what I was expecting, the way they've assembled this. I thought they'd have done it all from one side. But they've actually fed the LEDs through from the back and then sort of folded them back uh, on the front. So all the wiring is smunched up in the back. I suppose that makes sense. It's actually quite neat. It means it's very uncluttered in the front. So what's the spacing between these? Is it fairly standard fairy lightish type spacing? Yes, it is. And because of the way they've done their four colours, and they've basically put a, a standard string with the four, you know, the sequential colours, uh, blue, white, green, red, or whatever it was, uh, in a row, they've just uh, basically put them in like the, the blue at the bottom, then the white, then the green, the red. They've moved on to the next one and done the same again. So it looks like it's a standard sequential colour set of lights. Let's say I get more of these caps out. I've just bent that horribly, that LED cap, because I didn't take the glue off it. So there is a ample opportunity. This looks a bit shitty, this bin. Ooh. Oh, that's not got the heat shrink around it, that's why. That's a little manufacturing blip. Oh, and in the middle, they've just shoved all the LEDs up in the middle. So this is uh, completely redoable. If you had, say, for instance, a string of one colour, you wanted the, the star to match, you could take your existing string of lights and you could apportion off 21 uh, LEDs at, that, uh, at the top of that end of that string and you could put them into one of these stars and just hack it to modify it. Or you could do whatever you want. You could put flashing or colour changing LEDs in. You could even convert it to a series string of LEDs and make it mains voltage if you wished, if you were so inclined. Really not much else to say about it. Other than that, you know, it's designed to take the standard sleeved LED arrangement and then 
you put the frame in these two halves, the clamshell halves, and put them together and that's more or less it. It's neat enough. It looks quite nice. And uh, as with most things, how much was that? Uh, it was from Poundland, but it was, the, it was in their £2 range, which is for... What you're getting, it's something that's going to give you pleasure of hacking and modifying stuff like that. It's absolutely acceptable. So yeah, it's it's all right. It's quite nice construction inside, and uh, very hackable. Oh, seriously, I can't just end the video like that. Allude to it being hackable and then not actually hack it. So as a tribute to those of you with gothic tendencies, uh, Mega Wayne D comes to mind. Uh, I'm going to put a purple set of lights into it and make it into a purple gothic death star. I might even actually make it a USB powered purple gothic death star for long term purple gothicness. So this is a set of Halloween lights. Oh, I've just got melt, hot melt all over my fingers here. Uh, I have to say, uh, this, uh, this is a set of Halloween lights and it takes a fair amount of effort to put them in. You know, it takes it's a, a lot of faff. And somewhere in China, right now, there is a factory full of little women sitting at benches doing nothing but putting these in manually. I wonder if they've got a different person does the hot milk gluing afterwards. It's a bit delicate, very easy to put too much hot milk glue in. Other things worthy of note. Ryobi hot milk glue gun. It's very good. Thanks for that tip, Ave. My Canadian internet bro. Uh, he did a review of this, uh, which was a typical Avish review, but I have to say it's been great. It's been very good. I like that. It's a very useful tool indeed. Uh, so we've got the lights in this. It's worth mentioning, if you're going to keep them on an existing battery pack, you have to thread them in to this uh, little bit at the base first. Likewise, I found that out when I was removing these lights. They all had to be pulled through it. And you get a nice set of lights to boot. So that's all the purple Halloweenish LED lights in. Is this actually going to go back in now? I will also say that it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mess at the back. There's probably some technique involved in putting this in that these little Chinese ladies are an absolute expert at, but I'm clearly not. Uh, I'm also noting that I have to keep these little holes here clear to actually put this back in. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Oh, it's going to be messy. This could be very very faffish. So let's uh, try and squish that down. Oh, it's not squishing down too well. That's a lot of wiring in there. I'll turn the hot milk glue gun off. That's probably a bad idea. I'll suddenly need it again now. Right, so that is more or less it satin, I think, onto those little pins. Um, let's get the other half and see if it goes on and see what it looks like. This is so much wiring underneath that it's popping up all the time. Oh, every time I let go, it wants to pop up. I shall use unreasonable force. This is where you get the sound of splinching plastic. Right. Is that going to go on there? Oh, let's tell you what, it's looking pretty good. It would have been helpful if I had run the wires out properly before clipping that fully together, but not to worry. Oh, that is looking very stylish. Can you get purple stars online? Can you get them from shops? I don't know. Uh, you can make them yourself, so it doesn't really matter. That wire leads out there. This goes on there. Clipped together. Sorted. Let's see how that looks. So I'm going to take the exposure off. Pop the light off. Oh, that is intense. That is actually a bit too intense. Let's try and uh, let's try and cheat this down so the exposure. No, it's not. It's just going to say, yeah, that's just. It also looks a lot pinker. It looks like a big pink star. It's more purpley in real life. Um, how can I sort of give you an indication of how that looks? I can't is the answer. Okay, so now I've dropped the batteries out. Oh, right, okay, one moment, please. Okay, let's begin the hack to put a USB plug on it. So what we're going to do initially is I'm going to tin the leads. So I've got the soldier iron on. I've only just put it on. Hopefully it'll be up to temperature. So let's just... Tin the pre-strip leads. I don't know the polarity is yet, but that's okay. We don't have to worry about that too much. And I've decided that given that it's purple LEDs, although there's only about 20 of them, I want to run it about 100 milliamps because it's one of the duller colours because it's not at the peak of the uh, human visual spectrum, so to speak, the sensitivity. I've got a lithium button cell here and I'm going to put it across and either 
that way, nothing lights up, or that way, and they glow purple, so that means that one is the positive. So let's put a wee dab with a sharpie on that, just to mark that. And I'm going to do it differently this time, I'm not going to uh, put resistors in line with sleeve over them and stuff like that. I'm going to put them straight onto a bare USB connector. You can get packs of these off eBay. And to determine the polarity, I plugged it into a USB power bank and then shorted it out. That, that wasn't actually intentional, but um, I probed the leads here and put a red dot. It's the two outer ones you're interested in. One will be ground and one will be, or zero volt, one will be plus five volts. So I put a red dot on the side that is the plus five volts. These are actually designed to mount down onto the edge of a circuit board. So I'm actually going to crop those bits of those leads that go in that direction because uh, hopefully it means they won't pull out randomly when uh, it's plugged and unplugged. But I'm going to crop those little leads off and solder directly onto the metal pads coming out. Again, hoping I'm not going to melt them. I don't know. I've never tried this. Let's uh, crop the resistor lead. Shall we go down a bit closer? Let's go down a bit closer get in closer to the action. It's not very bright, but that's mainly because it's reflective objects and uh, they're just not reflecting the light too well. So I'm going to crop the LED, the resistor. Uh, I've chosen two 10 ohm resistors. The two 10 ohms give 20 ohms, which uh, I've got a five volt supply, three volts dropped across the LEDs. That's going to leave two volts dropped across the resistor. Two volts divided by the 10 ohms should give uh, the 2 times 10 ohm should give the uh, 100 milliamps if I've done my maths correct. There's no guarantee that I have done my maths correct. So I'm going to tin the lead here. And I'm going to tin those pads down there cautiously. Making sure I don't short onto the data pins. It doesn't really matter though because it's, a, it's really intended for from USB power banks and they don't actually have anything going on much on the data leads. So let's uh, solder this now. We'll reflow the pre-tinned resistor. This is where it gets a wee bit tight onto that connector and I'm just not getting at right angle here at all, am I? There, and just uh, unclipped it from the alligator clip. Yeah, it's all going horribly wrong, but then sometimes things do. That is not gripping very well. Let's try gripping it in the one that's not got the sleeving over it to see if it gets a, a more savage grip. The other thing I could do is stick it into a USB power bank and solder onto it, but that would possibly be tempting fate in terms of shorting things out. There we go. That's one on. Make sure I'm clear. I've not got splashes of solder to the other side. Okay. Now I am going to crop the other lead. Doesn't matter which way around these resistors go. I'm using two just because it's more convenient and it also spreads the dissipation. You could theoretically use a single 22 ohm resistor, which is the nearest value. I've got plastic on that uh, solder and I'm also soldering the wrong side of the soldering, but maybe I should have put different glasses on for this. Oh, I've just covered that resistor lead in crud. Professionalism. Let's try that again. There we go. And we'll solder it onto her there. Okay, that looks good. Now, I'm going to crop those leads again, and I'm going to tin them, ready for the wires going on. The wires are already tinned, so I'm going to put a little bit of extra solder on these resistors just to, to give something to flow into those wires. It's The other option you could do is do it properly and uh, actually flow the solder on at the same time you're touching the wires on. But this is an easier way to do it. So which is the side with the red dot? That's the side of the red dot. So the positive lead goes on there. And the negative lead goes on there. That looks pretty good. Very thin wire, but that's okay. We're going to give it lots of support in a moment. Uh, let's plug this into our USB power bank and see what happens. It has lit purple. Excellent. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this extra grip. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a bit of heat shrink sleeving. The heat shrink sleeving is going to go up over there, so I'm going to be quite generous about this. 
I'm going to be cautious about the fact that uh, I have to allow, I have to make sure I don't put the sleeving too far over the USB connector because if I do, it's going to stop it being pushed into the USB power bank. So let's slide this up to about a few millimetres, just over an eighth of an inch from the end of the connector. This is going to leave a good, say, 12 and a half, half inch to go into the power bank itself. If you want to double check, you can plug it into a power bank and then just slide the heat shrink down to roughly almost till it's touching that the power bank itself. Now I'm going to use a hot air gun to shrink the sleeve, but I'm not going to finish it off because I'm going to squirt some hot melt glue into that as well. The hot melt glue is getting used again. So the first thing I'm going to do is just shrink it round the base of the uh, connector itself. You could use a uh, two-part resin for this, but you'd have to make sure that the resin isn't going to flow down into the connector. The hot air gun is going up there, and then... This is where I'm going to make a huge mess, but that's okay. I, I'm not apologetic for making a huge mess. It's what happens when you're using glues and, uh, and resins and stuff like that. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to squirt a big blob in like that. Ugh. And immediately the heat shrink sleeving is going to want to shrink in that. That's good. And we'll finish it off with a hot air gun and some will ooze out the end. And we don't want to shrink it down too much to the point it's actually going to push the resistors together. Oh, it is oozing out the end. But what we've got now is, once that's cooled, we're going to have a very, very solid potted connection there. You can see it's got the clear, it's almost basically, it's almost like injection moulded connector because uh, we have filled it with the hot melt glue inside. Let's say uh, I get some of that off while it's just the right temperature without making too much of a mess like I've just done. And once that is cooled, I'll give it time to cool, we can then plug that in and check what the, the star looks like in the dark. Is it worthy of goth purple starishness? I think it will be. Let's turn this off, the, soldier, the hot melt glue gun. Let's get the wire trimmings off and I'll let that cool down and then we'll come back and take a look at it in the dark. And job done from happy fun 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 lights to purple gothic death star just in one sweep. So that is now completely USB powered. Actual current consumption is about 110 milliamps, which is close enough. And it looks very good. Now, in the past I've said, I don't think you're seeing the colour I'm seeing here. It looks very pink on the screen of the phone as I'm viewing it at the moment. But then sometimes it doesn't look that way when it comes out afterwards on YouTube, but it's very purple. It's very psychedelic. It's very nice. Poundland should totally do gothic Christmas decorations. So yeah, that's a good result. I like that. I think it looks so much better than the original Happy Fun Fun star. Now it's not so Happy Fun Fun. It's turned to the dark side.